Well, hey. hey there, George. Hey, Cameron. I, I think oh, we're live. I I'm think good. we're live. Are you? Yeah, this is, this is, I thought we, you know, we, we got really good uh, when we we're in the live studio, when we have, you know, the producer behind the desk and everyone is in person and we can do our, our countdown. But now that it's all remote, it's just a little bit more tricky. Is everything's much harder. And you'd know all about that because this is kind of a full-time job for you right now, uh, producing remote video content. Am I right? That's right. And uh, I'm sorry, I should say welcome to Live at Epifan. So my name's Cameron and this is George Birchall. And today we're talking about a very, a very um, timely topic right now. And that is the topic of... <laughs> <laughs> the, the most <laughs> awkward throw to ever. The, the slow drum roll. Group, that's oh, right. That's so great. We're, we're going to talk about uh, how we use Zoom with Pearl and how we use it. We're going to tell you how you can, uh, if you're a Pearl owner, uh, you can use Zoom as part of your workflow, or if you're looking to get better results from the, your Zoom platform, we're going to tell you how Pearl might be able to help you out. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got a couple of different ways to go into that. So uh, Cameron, if you pull up our slides, it's probably easier to describe uh, this way is that you can use Zoom uh, to capture and bring people into a Pearl, or you could use Pearl to broadcast um, to Zoom as well. So you can do a multi-camera event and then broadcast that out to Zoom. So Cameron is kind of our Zoom master right now. Uh, he's been uh, uh, figuring out how to use it like so many different ways. So Cameron's going to walk us through his work workflows and how he gets Zoom and Pearl to work together. That's right. Yeah. So do you want to jump right into this, Cameron? Well, first off, let me ask you, why would I want to bring Zoom into Pearl? Well, what am I trying to achieve? Well, obviously with Pearl, we've got this really powerful hardware encoder. We can bring in signals from multiple devices. We can bring in NDI signals. Um, off at, sorry, at the top of the show, we had a white screen. That should have been our bumper, so I'm going to have to figure out what happened there. But um, what we figured out is actually how to bring Zoom into the Pearl. Now, the benefit of using Zoom is that we can have these remote participants connect and you can have this zero latency interaction without having to, you know, have someone um, record something in person and then maybe send those files up and then have them come back down. Exactly. So that's kind of what we're doing here today, right? <clears throat> and obviously we um, we're using Zoom for this particular show and we are, um, bringing that signal into the Pearl that we have in our Ottawa office. I'm at home. George is at home right now. Obviously, in these times, we're, we're sheltered at home. Um, I did notice there's a couple of comments about the audio sync. There are some audio sync issues. That's just something inherent with Zoom, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, I, I forgot where I was going with that. What was the question that you asked me? Again? Well, we were just talking about why you would bring Zoom into Pearl to begin with. Because, for example, uh, Zoom supports RTMP streaming. So I could just stream my meeting out uh over zoom right that's right and um there are a lot of really powerful tools you can stream directly to youtube you can stream to facebook and you can stream to a custom rtmp uh, feed but with zoom you can't actually control what your layouts look like you wouldn't be able to inject titling like we can here and uh, there's a few other things that we can do with the pearl that you're not able to do with zoom just out of the box as it exists now that's Right. So like what we're looking at with this layout right now, this is all uh, composed in Zoom and we've got these great titles coming on screen. Uh, sorry, it's all being composed in uh, Perl. You can never do this kind of a layout with titles and, and switching between the different layouts with only using Zoom. So you need some kind of tool uh, like Perl to, to be able to uh, do compositing. Um, yeah, that's right. And um, I apologize. I'm just switching layouts on the fly and bringing up the titles just to illustrate that. But um, that one that, that I just had up was our titles at the bottom, the lower third, and that came in via an NDI signal, an NDI alpha signal directly into the Pearl. So why don't you start off by telling us what is the setup we've got going on today? Um, I mean, I have some supporting diagrams here we can help to try to illustrate that, but you'd know it better than anybody else. So give us a tour. Yeah, you bet. Let's bring up the diagram. Um, I do apologize. My bandwidth is really hurting right now because I'm streaming this video out and I'm also bringing a lot of different video sources and different computer sources in. My internet's just kind of maxed out. So I'm going to look a little bit choppy, but 
um, you know, I think this is going to be some valuable information. We'll probably revisit again in a little bit more of a stable format. Now, looking at this first diagram, what we're demonstrating here is that we have a production computer. So that production computer is set up with multiple monitor outs. So that one, we're sending out two HDMI signals from that production computer. One of them is a quick time feed. So that allows us to inject uh, media playback into the Perl. And the other one is the Zoom studio room, or we call it. And that's actually the gallery view within Zoom, which is appearing on a screen, which is connected to the computer. And that is something that we're cropping and then bringing into the Perl. Now with the Perl, we do have up to four HDMI inputs. And if you have a, an iMac, for example, or you know a MacBook Pro or a, a Mac mini or any other kind of computer that supports multiple USB-C outputs, you can set up those USB-C outputs to act as monitors. So when you're bringing it into the Perl from your computer, your computer just thinks it's a monitor itself. So you could just connect that right up and then you'd be able to inject that signal into the Perl, crop it, do what you want, put it into different layouts. I'm gonna stop moving my hands because I think it's really, really looks bad with the choppiness. So to, to, uh, the short version is you, you have a Zoom call, you get everybody looking the way you want them framed in that gallery view. And then you, with Perl, you crop those and set them up as layouts within Perl, right? That's correct. And one of the things that uh, we've learned as a trick is that we know generally where the uh, squares are going to be for everybody in the gallery view. So we can, um, we can just adjust them in advance and kind of create our layouts based off of that. And then when we get into the gallery view, then we can do some finite cropping just to make sure that everyone has the right general heads, uh, head sizes and headroom between each other. Right. And I see you've composed these all in these nice backgrounds as well. So bringing in the graphics and stuff is something you can never do with a Zoom stream of any kind. So uh, that looks great. Now, um, I do apologize to Knockout Digital. Uh, the audio sync um, is, it is a common problem. And it's something that um, you know, we're kind of struggling with on this particular uh, session. I'm going to bit so we can actually adjust the audio delay within the Perl. So I've bumped that up from 10 milliseconds, which we've tested before with Zoom and works fine. And I've gone up to 100 milliseconds. So we'll see if that maybe helps a little bit with that. You probably might have noticed a little blip on the audio there if you're watching online. So then another bit of classic live production on the fly, uh, yeah, hosting exactly. and producing the show at the same time. Exactly. Um, so right, then... Well, um, Oh, I'm sorry, George. So when we get into the parole, then we do create those layouts. And of course we can, rec we can record all of those ISOs internally. Right. Um, and here, let me, I'm going to show you, everybody a peek behind the curtain here on what Cameron's looking at here with the layout editor, the live switcher, which you captured a beautiful image of me this morning on, I can see Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so is this what you're looking at right now on one of your monitors? Yeah, that's right. So on the monitor that's directly in front of me, I've got the, um, the layout editor on the left-hand side, which you can also use for switching through the Perl UI. And on the right side, I'm using Epifan Live. Now Epifan Live is also eating up a, little, a lot of bandwidth because it will refresh all of those thumbnails live as the new uh, video content is streaming in and between the two i'm able to control the switching make any last minute layout changes that we have on there and um, any kind of configuration changes that might have to happen on the fly on the pearl itself and how does new blue titler uh fit into this because we see these nice titles on there where is that coming from so the new blue titler is also running on that production computer and so on that first uh, diagram that we saw, there was a split screen between QuickTime and NewBlue. So NewBlue is, oh, thank you, George. So NewBlue is running on the production computer itself. And over the network that we have the Perl connected to, the NDI signal is coming directly from NewBlue just over the network and then into the Perl. And it's being ingested as a um, NDI alpha signal. So that allows us to put titles right on top of the video that we have just by having that as the top layer within our composition within the layout editor that you just saw on the other slide a moment ago. 
Very cool. Um, so you're pretty happy with this workflow. I'm sure you can think of some ways that you want to make it, take it to the next level. Um, well, and I think one of the things like this is, it is a great workflow and it works well for us when we're supporting a remote production um, that I'm not involved in. When I'm actually a part of the production, then we really see it suffer. And that's just because of the bandwidth that I have here locally. So we've been, um, you know, we've been doing our webinars, we've been doing other live shows, and those actually go very smoothly when I'm not part of it. So if anyone's watching right now and they're thinking, oh, this is terrible, it's a terrible example of Zoom and how to use it, it's really just more of a, a limitation with my own ISP. Well, I'd say it's a, it's a pretty good general tip. Don't try to run all the content and produce all the content at the same time. It's probably good advice for anybody making uh, a production out there. Uh, there's a lot to, to 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 consider, and in your case, the bandwidth, of course, is a especially big uh, hurdle. There's the ISP bandwidth, and then there's the Cameron brain bandwidth, which is even a narrower stream <laughs> of, uh, of content flowing back and forth. Right, right. Um, so, how about some production tips for those people trying to um, to do this on their own? What would what would you what would you suggest to them? Monitors, monitors, monitors. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just switching us over to our, uh, just a one-up of me and I'm gonna go into Zoom and I'm gonna switch over the camera source here. So as you can see, I've got a lot of monitors set up in my home studio here. So on the far left, I've got a monitor where I'm ignoring all the messages on the chat coming in from our moderators about how my audio is low and the sync is off. Uh, also, we've got our YouTube uh, chat feed here so i'm monitoring and keeping an eye on the chat we have uh, on this window this is the document for this particular episode that we're doing and over here you can see epifan live and then on this screen is that zoom conference room that we mentioned earlier so this is a remote connection to that desktop where i can monitor where that layout is and of course on the far one is our ndi titling and the quicktime title now it would be a little bit different when I'm running a live production. We'd have some different configuration on the windows here. So this is the um, this is actually the Perl UI, and depending on what other content I have to be aware of, if we have a show notes or anything, I might have that over on the other screen. Um, and we talked about some of these other tips, like keeping your Zoom window stationed in one place on the screen, so that when you do your cropping, uh, people stay where they're supposed to stay in your layouts, right? <clears throat> And you bet. And that's imperative. And it's also a, the same tip for making sure that if someone is coming in, uh, maybe at the end of the, the Zoom call, or if they need to leave, that you put them in the last spot. Because if you put them in the very first spot of that gallery view, once they leave, it's going to affect all the other participants on that actual uh, Zoom call, and also affect all the cropping that you have. So right. keeping it stationary and in one spot, that way you know where the crops are and you'll be able to directly control that. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this next tip a little bit, using an NDI source for titling uh, and motion. In our case, we're using New Blue Effects. Uh, you have another tip here, which talks about creating separate channels for your program feed and your production feed. Maybe you could take a minute and explain what that means because it uh, might be new to some people. Yeah, so uh, something that we've been experimenting with and using Zoom is that the computer that's connected in that studio, it is outputting, or sorry, the Perl that's connected in the studio, it is outputting a confidence feed. So on the Perl 2, we have two HDMI outputs. And one of those is specifically for Zoom, and that's creating a loop back. And we have a feed coming from the Perl, and that includes what is live, what, the, uh, what our staging or what our production setup is, what the media playback is and also what our gallery view is of the um, of the actual stream itself I'm, i apologize i don't have an example of that right now that i can show but basically you're creating this four up confidence monitor that everyone can view as they're looking at it for this call right now between george and i george is watching the live feed coming out of the pearl so we have confidence in knowing that the stream is working and the pearl is on the correct layouts um, we talk about our next tip, making sure the participant at home setup is as good as possible. I guess that's fairly uh, explanatory. You've probably 
dealt with some people with some pretty horrendous setups and you have to actually walk them through how to like open a curtain so they have light coming in and other basic things like that. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, right now in this environment, you can't just run over to Fry's or you can't go to B and H and, you know, grab a light, grab a stand. Um, these stores are closed. If you have some, um, preparation time, you might be able to get something on Amazon, but as we know from equipment that we've tried to get for ourselves and our own productions, you know, they're not really prioritizing this gear and they're making sure that a lot of these essential products are getting out. So you have to work with what you have. Um, if you have a nice room, it's well lit. Generally, you can take advantage of those lights that might be in the room, that big window like George had mentioned, and just make sure that it's as good as you can get it um, without really uh, having to invest in anything else or wait for something to come in. Right. I think this last tip is completely bogus. It says test participant audio. Uh, I'm pretty sure audio always just comes in fine, and uh, that's maybe overkill. Am I right, Cameron? Well, it's it's a little bit of overkill. Uh, Zoom is handling a lot of the audio. There is some functionality within Zoom where you can just send the straight audio out, and it, it sends this unadulterated audio stream. But what we've been finding so far is that it is it is a little bit tricky to nail that one down. But we do test it in advance. We can make some small adjustments before, but not the same kind of adjustments that we'd be able to make on a mixer in person. So although we want to get it as great as we can, um, you know, because of the environment, there is a little bit of forgivability in that. Right. Um, so I'm just looking at my show notes here. Uh, we always have these great writing team that helps us get ready for these shows. So that's another thing we need to consider is that you have to have your material somewhere accessible to you while you're producing these shows. Um, so do we need to talk anything more about this first setup idea, uh, and how we're doing this? Uh, we haven't talked uh, about it. Yeah, for sure. So maybe just some, um, some general workflow tips. So George mentioned that we do have a great writing team at Epifan and, um, our writer in Palo Alto, we were actually just on a call right before the show started going over a few of the last minute changes, some of the notes, and just the fact that, um, you know, making sure that everyone's on the same page with the content, but we want to always ensure that your scheduling is really tight, that you've built in enough time for this testing, that you're not just jumping on, you know, 15 minutes before the live stream is supposed to start, or maybe your, uh, your virtual conference or your webinar, that you actually have time to do a little bit of troubleshooting and address issues where you can. Um, having multiple people work on the production is also very beneficial. So, you know, for example, if we're doing a production for a company and, they've got their own creative team and they've got maybe someone on the team that has experience with doing line production or, um, you know, directing, then the person that's operating the switcher is in contact with that individual. They're calling the shots and making sure that they're actually able to, um, you know, to keep a good kind of grasp on the workload because you don't want one person doing too much because then that's when it's going to start to fall down. That's right. Um, so what about the other use case that we talked about off the top? So people wanting to bring a, let's say a multi-camera production into Zoom. So maybe we're having a call uh, with you and I, our CEO of uh, Cameron George Enterprises, and we wanna have a, a Zoom call with our 2000 employees on Zoom. And, but we want a better quality production. Maybe we want something with multi-camera or even just real professional cameras. Pearl can be pretty useful in that scenario as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the Pearl is um, basically, a, you know, a computer with a series of capture cards that's built in. It's a hardware appliance. So um, we've built in a lot of really robust functionality to it. But you can use that unit to bring in that super high quality signal and then put it back out uh, in a way that would be ingestible into Zoom, again, just via a capture card. Right. Uh, we have a little uh, diagram to show camera switching and whatnot too. Yeah. We have a little diagram that shows how that might work. Um, and I know we've experimented with this in the past as well. Um, it's a little tricky because again, zoom doesn't always play nicely with every kind of video source. Uh, if we have music or anything that's coming in here, it could be challenging. Uh, and it's not going to give you the same kind of quality you'd expect out of a Pearl normally. Normally when you're using a Pearl and you're streaming, you get beautiful 1080p footage to your CDN. But when you work with something like Zoom, you're going to get a whole lot of compression. But 
you'll still get a great looking, um, better looking image than you would from, let's say, a webcam. And you'll have the flexibility to make really cool layouts and bring in professional cameras and professional audio. So uh, that could be fun to play with. We haven't done many of these, um, but maybe we will in future when we actually get to see humans again. <laughs> well, and um, you might have picked up in the news recently that Zoom, because they're just doing so much video streaming right now, they have limited the bandwidth for individual users. So that's capped out at about 360. Um, what is that? 360 by 480, George? Or is it? Uh, I can't think about the exact number. Is, I, I never that, feel, I, I don't it's been feel, so long, I haven't had to think about that resolution that I don't remember it anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like SD, basically, or yes. far, like sub SD. But um, so it is kind of crushing that that bandwidth right now. Or sorry, that, uh, that quality right now because of the bandwidth but you can still get out the production value that you want. And, you know, like we preached all the time and we're not really demonstrating super effectively on this episode is that if you have good video, you can get away with some, uh, sorry, if you have good audio, you can get away with bad video. I just about said that the exact opposite. That's right. Um, uh, but one other thing with this set, this setup that we're talking about using Pearl as a production mixer, this is not where you bring in remote guests. So essentially, you have to have everybody in the room uh, locally, and they're, they're gonna, you're going to have some kind of uh, presentation, and then you can stream that out to your guests. Uh, and there'll be a bit more. Oh, of course. And I'm sorry, George. I, I did mean for the output to Zoom, it's still going to limit it a little bit, yes. but you will have that. And of course, using the Pearl, if you have it on site, then you can record all of those ISOs, which are the individual streams or individual um, signal inputs, and you'll be able to use that later. And, you know, maybe create some other kind of VOD content. Maybe you take For that sure. entire meeting, capture it on the Pearl, and then you'd be able to put that on YouTube at a higher quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we do all the time. Well, we don't actually do that workflow, but we could... For example, for this call today, we could stream it live at, at this resolution through Zoom and record a really high quality ISO, edit it back together and put it up to YouTube as a really polished thing. And that's what I'm sure the people on the late shows are doing right now. All these people doing live content is they do some kind of Zoom call, but they record a high quality local version. Exactly. Um, I was watching a video that talked about how Conan is producing content and that's exactly what they're doing. They're using a video conference tool. They're recording locally and uh, all these assets go up into the cloud. The editing team pulls them back down. They do their work. They'll get approvals, put it up for review, and then they'll send it back to uh, the broadcast center to be sent out live, or not live, but they'll, they'll have it ready to be broadcast. And yes. it's an efficient workflow, and it's kind of the best what we can I've lost my internet. I'm not sure whose internet has gone down, if it was yours, Cameron, or mine, but I suddenly lost you there. Um, oh, look at that. My Your internet connection is unstable. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, okay, Zuma. okay. So I'm, I'm aware of that. <laughs> I, I've, I froze as well for a good 12 seconds, and I made sure to go like, so they couldn't tell whose internet connection went down there. Um, yeah. <laughs> But you were and saying you're to... talking about the, those live shows doing their high quality ISOs, recording that, and then stitching it together later. Yeah, you bet. They're using a high quality ISO. Maybe they're even just using the the webcam that's on the front of the computer, right? It doesn't have to be super um, super high quality uh, just to get the messaging out. That's kind of the more important part. Sure. Um, what I would like to start experimenting with is using a high quality camera, recording just on the camera. Mm -hmm. And then we can use Zoom for the interactivity and then bring those sources together afterwards. Yeah, maybe we can do that on one of our live shows. Uh, just to make things a little bit more uh, fun and entertaining for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so do we have any other Zoom tips before we wrap this up? Uh, no, I think we've covered most of it. Um, Marta's probably shaking her head because we did miss a few things. So um, I think we definitely have an opportunity to put some more messaging together around this later. But, um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, we're still figuring this out as we go along. Um, we do have some powerful tools and we learn from our customers how they use it. We learn ourselves and we try to educate our customers as well. But with everything changing so quickly, we're just trying to keep up as quickly as we can and figure out what our options are to make everything work together. Cool. 
Uh, well, thanks to everybody for joining us today. Uh, thanks, Cameron, for showing us how the uh, sausage is made. And no, I think sorry. we're going to see... We're going to see you back here next week. Uh, what are you going to be talking about? Uh, that's a great question, George. I, okay, I well, I can answer it for you. Oh, no, 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 I have it here, I have it here. <laughs> so we're, um, we're going to be talking about moving your classes online. And um, I'm actually going to be having a conversation with Matt Renault. Uh, Mathieu is on our support team, and he is our... Uh, LMS guru. So he knows everything about different platforms like Kaltura and, and Panopto. And he's, um, he's very well um, educated in that space. And we're going to talk about what educators are doing and how to best use those tools and really kind of what's available. Awesome. Well, we'll see you back here next week at three o'clock. Uh, I want to remind everybody as well that we have a whole uh, batch of webinars that we plan this week that are going to be rolling out over the next, well, even today, actually, it's a, there's a couple up on the website you can sign up for today. And a lot of them will have uh, people who know quite a bit about Pearl. So if you're thinking about wanting to use Zoom with Pearl, uh, there's some people who you can talk to during those webinars. Uh, so be sure to sign up for those. So don't forget to just subscribe. So far, those, have been, those have been a little bit more stable. Our, uh, our webinars have worked a little bit better. Um, yeah. And yeah. just to address a few questions on the chat, of course, we will, be, we will be back at 3 p.m. next week. Today, we were not late because of any technical difficulties. Um, I was just tied up. We're supporting another live stream that was going on somewhere else in North America, uh, you know, Eastern, Eastern America. I can't say anything more than that. Though. Eastern America. Eastern uh, America. Yeah. And, okay, well, and uh, just so I can call this out real quick. Right on the right side, there we go. So this is our studio here in Ottawa. This is where the Pearl 2 is actually running this live production right now. And just our empty, lonely office space. Just to show that. Oh, well. We'll get back there. Yeah, this isn't bad. This is pretty good, I like it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not too bad. All right, George, well, thank you. Um, thank you very much. And uh, thank you everyone that's uh, tuned in today. I do apologize about some of the intermittent quality issues, but Hey, yeah. this is the world we live in. Yeah, exactly. It's the new normal. And yeah. I'm so sick of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, see you George. later, Cameron. See you, everybody. Have a good night.